Ah, real racing. A game full of possibilities, full of cars and full of tracks to race on. This game has been setting the bar for being the most visually stunning game for a long time now, and no other game has been able to compete in that aspect yet. I'm convinced that this might still be a contender for the best racing game on mobile for almost 10 years now. So, let's have a look at where the real racing franchise started off, shall we? Back in 2009, Firement released their first ever racing game, called Real Racing. It was one of the first real-life racing simulators to be published on the App Store. The game received critical acclaim, getting 9 out of 10 from IGN and Pocket Gamer, and a whopping 88 out of 100 on Metacritic. It was praised for its visuals and the amount of realism the game itself had. It was safe to say that Real Racing was a success. Later on, in October of the same year, Real Racing teamed up with Volkswagen to promote their newly released 2010 GTI model, and created a limited time free spin-off called the Real Racing GTI, which featured three tracks to play on with Volkswagen GTI cars, and even the spin-off did pretty well, gaining over 4 million downloads in the span of just one year. After the successful first game, its sequel Real Racing 2 came a year later in 2010, following even more praise than the original game, getting a 94 out of 100 on Metacritic, surpassing the score for the original game. The sequel proved to be even more successful than its predecessor, and got multiple awards the same year. It featured 30 officially licensed cars and 15 tracks, interestingly based on fictional locations. It ran on Fireman's all-new Mint 3D engine, which delivered console-like visual effects, real-time shadow rendering, particle effects, realistic car physics, and much more. EA took interest in the Australian game developer, and later bought out the studio in 2011. Then in July of 2012, Firement announced that it would be merging with another EA studio called Iron Monkey Studios, and ultimately became Fire Monkeys. And so from then on, the games released afterwards were released under the new company name. Real Racing 3 was first shown at the iPhone 5 Apple keynote in September of 2012, showing a pre-release version of the game. Now we're known for creating the ultimate racing experience on iOS. Well, the new iPhone, Let's just take this to a whole new level. So today, I'm going to show you Real Racing 3 for the first time. Look at the graphics here. Now these graphics, they've been built to full console quality. And they're running on the powerful new iPhone. I mean, all this is running in the palm of your hands. It's incredible. Now have a look down the side of this Porsche. See the reflections? You see the car and the track reflecting dynamically in the bodywork. Now this not only looks awesome, but it actually shows you a bit of what's going on around you. I mean, it actually makes the game easier to play, as do rear view mirrors. Yes, for the first time in real racing, you can see behind you. It's great. <laughs> it was supposed to show off the iPhone 5's wider screen and the insane graphics performance of the processor. The game itself became available later in February of 2013 for both Android and iOS devices. Both of the previous games were paid, whereas Real Racing 3 was first to become a free-to-play title. While the game itself first introduced the freemium model, which players of the previous two games were a bit upset about, the game itself left people to be absolutely amazed with how the game looked. They somehow managed to go even further with the visuals. This is the first ever mobile game that actually felt like a AAA title, with realistic graphics and physics, and a lot of licensed vehicles, which basically came very close to titles like Forza 2 for the Xbox 360. What wasn't so close though, was Real Racing 3's free-to-play system. The player is required to maintain and service their vehicles, which requires real-world time and in-game tokens, which can be purchased with money. Although the free-to-play model here is pretty obvious, it doesn't distract from the game itself. The cars themselves are really nicely textured, almost making them feel lifelike, and each car has its own unique sound effects, making the game feel a lot more realistic. And if you didn't like the look and feel of your car, you can just hop over into the customization menu and get your car a new sleek paint job, get some sick rims, upgrade your suspension, or put a bunch of stickers on it. The traces here are pretty limitless. The way the campaign works in Real Racing 3 is that you have a couple of different categories to choose from, starting with Racing School, where you get to learn some tips and tricks on how to win races against other players. Once you finish the course, you move up in the ladder, going from the easiest to more difficult races. Now you can also set up your driver assists in the settings. 
from steering and brake assist to things like traction control and whatnot to help you drive better on the tracks. One of the biggest new additions to Real Racing 3 is something called Time Shifted Multiplayer, which basically records your opponent's time and performance on the track and generates an AI car based on those properties, so you're able to race that same opponent as many times as you like. You can even bump into them or damage their vehicle. It's really like you were playing against them in real time, that's how good it is. Although there is a way to cheat the system, so if you lose the track a couple of times, the bot will go easy on you, and it'll make finishing the track much easier. Also, I'm pretty sure I've got the entire soundtrack permanently etched into my brain, but I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Yeah, there might have been only like 12 songs in the game at most, four of them being repeated all of the time. I managed to and still do enjoy these songs a lot. Have a listen to a couple of them here. And yeah, I know, I'll probably get striked for this, but oh well. As for Real Racing 3, the game still gets updated to this day, and will continue to get more feature-packed updates in the future. Although don't expect another game to come out, since this is supposedly the last game of the whole Real Racing series. Oh, and did you know that Real Racing 4, the sequel to Real Racing 3, was scrapped due to EA laying off over 40 employees from the Fire Monkey studio, just because EA wanted to focus more on live services? This was pretty shocking since their buyout back in 2010. Fire Monkeys was one of the biggest Australian game developers, having over 200 employees, which made up almost 45% of the entire Australian gaming industry. Some developers from the Real Racing 3 team would go on to work on a new Need for Speed game for mobile called Need for Speed No Limits. So instead of seeing Real Racing 4 in the near future, EA promises that the current title will still get new content in the coming years. And as for me, this is still hands down the best original racing game made for mobile devices, excluding games on mobile that were ported from last gen consoles. Even though I don't play it as much as I used to back then, I still keep coming back to it year after year just to play one more time.